Welcome back to Off The Rail. Day two is just wrapping up. We've got an Aussie in the house. <laughs> Emily, as good always. Day, good day, mate. Good day, <laughs> Good day, Justin. Listen, good to see you. Where have you been hiding anyway? Um, back back home in Australia, playing a lot of English pool. Two shot. Two shot. That's yep. what they call English two pool shot. in Aussie. Okay. Two Did you shot. know that, Emily? I did not know that. Right, they call it nine two ball. shot. Right, so where you been? Why have you not been playing nine ball, pal? Um, a lot of two shot back home in Australia. Um, and yeah, it's just, um, I've been enjoying that and uh, taking a bit of a break. Well, you're still in. Emily, we're going to talk a little, about, a little bit about nine ball going over to Australia so you can start playing again. Yeah, it's fantastic. We've been working with um, Arthur on Pocket Sports. Uh, he's got two World Nine Ball Tour ranking events this year. In August, I believe it's the 18th to the 20th. Um, as the first ranking event and yep. he's got another one coming up in November and you know I don't want to speak for Justin but he's obviously by having a few ranking events in his home country and uh, more locally he can climb the rankings and it makes trips like this a bit more justifiable so we, look it is long for Justin to come over for a, an open tournament obviously we all know there's the World Cup of Hall next week yep, yep. Um, but it just it it's more structure to the rankings and um, I'm really pleased that we've got a really you know great partner in uh, pocket sports to come on board with us for these ranking events it's just look we're starting off with two this year he, he's come on board and he's very sort of matchroom uh, commercial mindset which okay. we love um, and he's got he's really ambitious looking forward for next year so you know Justin can actually stop playing whatever you call it and come over to nine ball a bit more yeah it, no it's great first with the um the Asian nine ball tour something a bit closer to home and now something in the Oceania region it's just been what we've been looking for so it's um yeah it's been great Arthur um, at Pocket Sports there's doing a great job yeah and I was just noticing Justin I joked around a little bit but you're coming out to your match with your zip undone have you not have you not been to the matchroom tournaments? In no, a not, while? not in a while. You told me <laughs> off actually first match. Well, you know how you zip too low. Is that is that in the rule book? Then? Oh, I just said it was a little bit low. I was well, like, it's, it's, it's probably got flip flops out there. It's oh, quite thongs, hot out there. Thongs, you call them, don't you? you know, so. Thongs. Listen, that's what you need, don't you? In Australia or Asia, like you said, you need more nine ball tournaments. It's Emily's fault. She's going to make it happen. So you got to get the queue back out. I have to get the queue back out. It makes it so much easier. Four or five hours flight instead of a 24 hour flight over here. So it's it's unreal. Quick word about the World Cup of Pool. Do you live near James in Australia? Have you put any time in together? Uh, we haven't put any time in together, but- uh, That was Jack the worst answer yeah, that's, ever. That's not going to cut it in <laughs> this tournament, pal. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, using, um, you know, James is about an hour or two flight away. Um, we've known each other for a long time and we know the games well, so. We'll, we'll gel well and um, hopefully we can play well. Well, you'll have the day off on Monday. You're going to try and get on a table somewhere and, you know, get a bit of a game going? Yeah, I'll be practicing as much as I can um, in this tournament as well. Um, still in it, so... And then, yeah, James and I will uh, have a few sets for sure. How yeah. are you finding the Spanish Open so far? You've just obviously finished your match just now. We've just pulled you away from uh, from yeah. that win. How are you finding it? Yeah, it's um, it's, it's been awesome. Uh, I, I flew in last night, so you know, towards the end of the, the night, I was I was getting a bit a bit tired, but I was just uh, happy to get over the line in the end. What about the pockets? Obviously, probably last time you played, yeah. probably on a bit more of a generous pocket. Every table in here, four inch pocket, how are you finding that? Uh, very brutal, it's more like Chinese eight ball now. now. So um, you've got to be on your game and, and spot on, there's no uh, pinch in the pocket. Yeah, that's right, that's Emily's fault by the way. Every table, four inch. <laughs> Emily, listen. You just want to see us miss the balls, don't well, you? Well, we all want to see no. you miss. Yeah. Did you watch the last match by the way, Emily? We're just going to talk about the female players in the event. Pia Filler won a match. I know you did an interview. Christina, a little bit unlucky there in the end against one of the Hall of Fame legends from Europe. Mickey. I know, and the scratch on the end, it's just so frustrating to see that. And look, I love watching Mika play because he's so animated and, you know, he's made, it doesn't matter <laughs> what happens. He knows exactly where that camera is and he's staring right yeah. down at it and he's giving all the facial expressions. But listen, I'm a promoter at the end of the day, so that's TV gold for me. I absolutely love it. As um, soon as we saw their match come up on the on the draw, we were like, it's TV gold, we need to get that on the stream. Um, but Christina, you, you feel gutted for her because she, they were neck and neck throughout the whole game. And you know, she, I really, I said it to Pia earlier, like hats off to these ladies who are coming into an open tournament. You know, Pia admitting that she's like the underdog coming in. She, she said herself that the men are better than the women at playing this, but yet they come in 
they back themselves, they have that confidence to come into a tournament and to hold their own. And they're coming out on a stream table with that confidence. And I just think it's absolute credit to them and for any girls that are watching at home, they see that as a, that's a really good role model. So, you know, it's, it's a shame for Christina there, but I'm just really pleased to actually see her enter the tournament. Um, and I just hope to see more of that to come. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, day two is just wrapping up. I think there's just two or three matches left. No major shocks yet. That's quite unusual, other than mm. the fact that Justin's still in. That's a bit of a shock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no real major shocks, is there? I think um, Catchy's brother earlier. That's what I wanted to talk about. Uh, you know, beating Sufi, and you know he played. He played phenomenal, and I don't think anyone. What a player! By we don't, I don't think anyone really knew what was going to happen. Everyone says, you know, it's Catchy's brother, and everyone knows the co-brothers. Uh, you know, um, really top of the level. And now all of a sudden, you know, Cope and Yi, Cope and Chung are going, right, we want to play doubles. Nah. Like, uh, <laughs> I think I just have to kick them out of the venue so there's no cash games happening. But I don't think we were expecting. Catchy kept saying it to me at the UK Open. He's like, my brother, who he win Junior Open. He's, you know, is he he's going to be fine. playing in the Junior Open? He is playing in the okay. Junior Open. So I'm quite concerned. <laughs> Justin, was you here when Claudio Catchy was playing at all? Did you did you manage to see uh, Eklund's younger brother? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, I seen the result against Muhammad Sufi. So, you know, he must have played some good good stuff. Yeah, he's a bit of a beast and he walks around like Catchy. He's got the same man. Big shoes to fill. Yeah, he's got big shoes to fill, but I think he can do it. I think he's a serious, serious player, that kid. Well, I said to Basar, who's uh, Catchy's normal World Cup pool partner, <laughs> I said, oh, you've got to be careful here. Watch out in a few years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I said, you could have the you know like the co-brother sort of thing uh, but it's all off order of merit if if um he's coming in and playing these open tournaments and playing matches like that he's he's through to you know um that winner's round from the two first wins coming into his first matchroom event his first game was on a tv table he just came in like he just had no uh concern sort of thing very very similar to catchy exactly how he is chilled out and uh, credit to him. So many good young players, isn't it? Is this the idea behind when we come to an open event? Obviously, we have a junior event. Maybe next year when we go to Oz, we could have the Justin Sage junior event. Is that the old plan? All right, stop for uh, easy now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Got budgets to set to. Look, it's the World Nine Ball Tour. And, uh, you know, even when you're in this arena, the music that's on, it's like, I mean, I'm bopping my head and you know, speaking like with Mario, he and uh, that turns around and goes, yeah, this is, excites me. I'm in the arena, I can I can feel a bit of atmosphere. It gives me energy to go out there. You've got a bit of a younger sort of um, music playing that gets everyone a bit going, except from like lift music or something and it being silent in here. But I'd like to see, I'm gonna put it out there, I'd like to see a younger player come and take down the Spanish Open. Just like someone who's climbing the rankings, who's grinding every ranking tournament who's going to all of these different events it's tough though it's tough it is tough but i'd love to see that come through because it just gives everyone that motivation because there's it's wide open for like the moscone cup and things like that and so i'd love to see that happen maybe claudio catch you imagine that back-to-back -back winners brothers oh that'd be a story it. wouldn't it that would be a story Listen, that's a wrap. Justin needs some sleep because he's just flown in from Aussie. still in the tournament. We did say we were going to do the World Cup of Pool draw tonight, but we lied. We're, we're going to do it on <laughs> Sunday because these boys have got a tournament to focus on, so mm -hmm. we don't want to start worrying about draws yet. So Sunday evening, Emily, me and you are going to do the draw, right? Yes. Right, OK. Justin's going to go to bed. Emily's probably going to stay here and watch some more pool matches. I'm going to go and meet Gary Wilson for a beer. We'll see you tomorrow, <laughs> 10 a.m.